Hi everybody, welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit about frags today, or as the proper name is, Fragmapetalums. This is Frag Sorcerer's Apprentice right here. It's a nice, large growing plant. As all of the ones that I'm going to show you are, uh, this one is a successive flower. Now there are some that are not successive, that flower all at once. But all the ones that I have are successive flowering. And uh, this is a nice large plant here. I'm going to back up then a little bit and, and show you uh, more of the plant. And uh, see if I can uh, zoom out here. There we go. There, There's uh, some of the plants. I've actually got three of them. Two are for sale right now. No, I have three for sale. And... Uh, they, the plants themselves get about two feet tall with about another uh, almost two feet uh, for the flower spike. So it's a large plant. Uh, as is uh, the next one I'm going to show you here. This is Fraglongifolium, which is actually a parent of Sorcerer's Apprentice. You can probably see a, a bit of the similarities in it. Uh, these are, you see three flowers here. And uh, that's because there's three flower spikes going, which is really nice. And uh, we're going to repot this after a bit. I'm just going to show you a couple other frags here. Here's a dwarf one. Okay, get down here. And uh, th this is frag Piercei. It almost looks like it's a terrarium plant or something compared to, to the others. <laughs> Uh, one thing that you'll see with these is most of them I have in in a nice size saucer, saucer and I keep a little water in it. Frags, in general, like to have what we call wet feet. In other words, the, the plants don't like to stay moist. They like to stay wet. A lot of times when they're found in nature, you will see that they are... Uh, growing in moss and detritus, leaf mold, that sort of thing. And underneath that, you will find water flowing. So they, they have got a lot of access to a lot of water. Okay, here, here's another one. This is a Frag Cardinal. And you can see I have it in a saucer also. For some reason, I keep saying saucer instead of saucer. I, I got sorcerer on the brain. <laughs> but you can see generally how they grow. And uh, they can flower pretty much during spring and summer. There isn't anything that I know of that, that will make them flower. Although they do like to have a good amount of light. I'd say at least Catlia type light. I'm growing with intermediate temperatures, which means about 55 degree nights during the winter time. During the summer, of course, uh, my nighttime temperatures don't always get down to 55, so it, it might only be like 65 or even 70 at night. But we're trying for about a 10 degree temperature difference at least. And right now, this, I just got this plant this spring and you can see it's a lot darker than the other ones and that's because it wasn't grown in nearly as much light as what I grow mine in. I also don't see that it is flowered for this person that I bought it from. So try to strive for a light green leaf and uh, we're going to repot one here. I'm going to repot this frag caught autumn and we'll show you uh, how things go with that, okay? So we'll move on to the potting table here with our caudatum, or not caudatum, long folium. And uh, we will repot this and I'll try to show you how I go about doing that, okay? Okay, here we are at the potting station and we're going to repot this. And I want to show you first of all, I'll 
take the plan and hold it up a little bit closer here. And if you can see, there's quite a few new growths starting to come out here. There's, oh, I'd say probably six or seven, maybe more. And uh, it's a nice, healthy plant. I'm going to try to keep it intact. It's also, you, you see these growths are up above the potting media. And that's not a real good thing. This thing is overdue for being potted. I got it last fall from a person. And... Uh, it just didn't receive the best of care, so it's overdue to be repotted. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the, the type of potting media that we have. We have, I'm going to be using two types here. This is my traditional mix here. I'm going to hold it up real close for you. Um, this is what I use mostly for paths and frags up to about four or five inches okay in pot size this is mostly my seedling grade mix and into that I add some more perlite some peat moss I also put in some osmocote to help for fertilization and I put some bone meal in which is a, a long-lasting uh, phosphorus additive Okay, now along with that, for my bigger plants, which is, this is one of them, uh, I, anything really over about four, four and a half inches pot size, I also add this. This is my Cattleya mix, and it's medium gray bark, along with perlite and charcoal. Okay, this is all kiwi bark that I get from a guy named Fred Clark who has Sunset Valley orchids. Kiwi bark is a lot like uh, the, the other type of bark that's real popular around here uh, in that it lasts quite a bit longer than your regular fir bark. This is really good. Now with, with something like this that's kept this wet, we're still going to want to repot this pretty much every year. Okay, because with it being kept wet, it's going to decompose this bark probably in 14 to 16 months. Okay, so it, it's, it's on pretty much a yearly repotting schedule. Okay, so we're going to take it out of here. And we'll start out by pulling out these stakes. Now, I know some of you might be saying, oh my God, he's doing this and it's in flower. With successive flowering, frags like this, uh, this has been in flower ever since I've got the plant. And I would not be surprised if it stays in flower all the time. So you really don't have much choice. So we're going to pull it out of here. Hope it comes willingly. There we go. Good. I think I'm, I'm going to try to reuse this pot because it, it seemed like there was quite a bit of room. And we're going to uh, move things around here. We, we actually have a fair amount of uh, nice, good, healthy roots. There, there is some here like that. That's how you can tell that root, is, root isn't very healthy. Won't cut that one off. Um, I'm not going to cut off all of the roots, but uh, I like to get rid of some here. We might go and uh, fast forward things here a bit. I get done doing this because it's it's a pretty boring process. <laughs> Something I notice. See, I don't know if, if you can get a, a look at this, but if you look in there, you'll see right here is the 
original growth. So it just grew in in all directions around this. So we're going to keep doing this and I will fast forward things and come back to you when I'm about done cutting these off. Okay, it looks like we're just about done snipping here. Well, that's got a light root growing from it. There's one. Okay. I'm also going to prune a couple of leaves uh, that are yellowing. And I think we're ready. Okay. Now, a lot of people will put what, what I call crock or stones, gravel, pieces of clay pot uh, in the bottom. You can do that if you want. I find that really with uh, with these, it once you get them wet, they pretty much have, have enough of a solid base and as far as drainage we don't really want to drain things too much uh, because we like these wet. I'm going to just uh, rinse this out a little bit and I will be right back. healthy plant here and we're going to start out by putting a bit of our Tatlia mix here in the bottom. Now we'll give it a little better drainage, okay? Now what I'm going to do is try to work that Tatlia mix in with the finer mix. start when I do this I, I with almost any plant I I start with the uh, crown of the plant a little bit lower than, than what I want it to end up at because I find first of all it, it tends to work its way up as, as, as I fill in and, and push it into the mix there and also if I want to I could just lift it up, whereas you can't push it down once you get started. This is dry. And 
one of the nice things about doing this, the peat in this will actually work its way down in through, and so will a, a lot of the, the perlite, especially the finer perlite. The charcoal that's in this will help to keep it nice and fresh from keep keep things from, from rotting. Now something that, that I noticed when I pulled this out, I didn't show you, was that uh, the saucer that I had this in had quite a bit of algae and stuff like that, and which is not ideal. You want to make sure your saucers get rinsed out on a periodic basis and don't look like you're doing uh, a study for for germs. <laughs> so we're just about finished here. And if I can find my label. Here we are. Put that back in and I will have to make sure that I write down 5 2015 so I know what month I did this. Now if you want, uh, one thing that I did not mention about frags is they are pretty good feeders. So if you want, you can put a little more Osmocote in. I, I don't put a lot in. I try not to go overboard with it. But you can sprinkle a little bit on top. I also uh, use a liquid fertilizer about once a week when I water. But the Osmocote will make sure that there's always enough fertilizer available. And I usually just work that in a, a little bit. Because for, for the Osmocote, especially with orchids, if the Osmocote is sitting on top, it really doesn't get much of a chance to dissolve. So in order for it to be useful, it has to be inside the mix. So, there we have it, uh, how to repot your frags, how to grow them, I hope, and I wish you all good luck, and we will see you next time. This is Wade from Wade's Orchids. Bye-bye. <laughs>